Divine Father, with a heart brimming with thanks I come before you. You who bring forth all that's wonderful and beautiful in my life, I humbly offer my gratitude and love. Thank you for the gift of life, for every breath that fills my lungs and for the steady beat of my heart that keeps me going. Each day is a reminder of your unwavering love and care. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. In the face of whatever you're dealing with today, God wants you to know that your help comes directly from Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're about to embark on a heartfelt prayer together, calling on God for divine protection and abundant blessings in the name of Jesus. Stay with us until the end, open your heart, and be ready to receive the uplifting power of this prayer. I'm thankful for the love of my family and friends, for their support that lifts me up and makes me stronger. I appreciate the nourishment for both my body and soul, and for the food that sustains me each day. May I never forget the abundance you provide, Lord. I'm grateful for the challenges I've faced, as they've helped me grow, become resilient, and deepen my faith. Your grace has been my strength through every trial. I'm thankful for the simple joys that brighten my days, the laughter of children, the beauty of nature, and those moments of peace and tranquility. In this moment of gratitude, I find solace and joy. I also remember those who are less fortunate. May your compassion and love reach them, bringing comfort and hope. As I express my gratitude, I also pledge to share my blessings with others. Make me an instrument of your love, extending my hands to those in need. With a heart filled with gratitude, I lift my voice in praise and thanksgiving. Father, you are my provider, my comforter, and my redeemer. I am forever thankful for your presence in my life. In everything I do, whether in words or actions, I do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. To you, Father, I give all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In John 10 verse 10, it's written that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says he came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Throughout the years I've been blessed with on this earth, I've witnessed too many Christian men and women robbed of their joy by the devil. Their faith has been shattered by the enemy's schemes. I understand that life can bring wounds, disappointments, and hurts. However, we must be mindful of how we react to life's challenges and disappointments. Troubles can either push us into the loving arms of Jesus Christ, or we can allow that disappointment to fester and build in our hearts, letting the enemy pull us away from the Lord. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. When you put your hope in the Lord, He gives you new strength. He renews your energy, enabling you to rise again after any disappointment. I may not understand what you're going through right now, I may not know the challenges you're facing, but in this moment, all I can offer is a word of encouragement and point you to what the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So dear friend, let's rejoice. As Psalm 118 verse 24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now let me ask you this. What else can we do but to rejoice and be glad in the day that the Lord has given us? What else can we do but to find joy in the fact that we have a new day, a fresh opportunity to live for Him, to glorify Him, and to be ambassadors for Christ? I urge you today to rejoice and be joyful, because as a child of God, you have the means, the way, and the power to overcome whatever you face. You have Jesus, the strength to endure, the faith to withstand the storm, and the firepower required to defeat the devil. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This verse is not a suggestion, it's a declaration. So don't just rejoice when things are going well or everything is good. Rejoice each day no matter what challenges greet you at sunrise. Rejoice and be glad because God has plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans for good things. Rejoice and be glad because the Lord God Almighty wants good things for you. So, even if your present circumstances aren't perfect, I encourage you to find just one reason to rejoice and be glad in this day that the Lord has made. Let's bow our heads in prayer.
Heavenly Father, you are a great and mighty God, our Redeemer. Lord Jesus, you are our Deliverer, leading us from sin to freedom. As Psalm 118 verse 24 declares, This is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for this new day, for the very air we breathe, and for the ability to praise you. Forgive us for the times we haven't rejoiced in your grace and goodness, and for any moments we've taken you for granted. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help. When we feel overwhelmed, be our strength. I pray for those who feel trapped in their troubles, that they may find reasons to rejoice. Open their eyes to the countless blessings you've bestowed upon them. Lord, help us not to let the negativity of the world steal our joy. Remind us that we have victory in Jesus, and we refuse to let the devil steal, kill, and destroy our joy. Psalm 119 verse 162 reminds us, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. Father, thank you for your precious word, a source of comfort and assurance. Your word gives us countless reasons to be joyful and glad. It tells us not to fear or be dismayed, for you are with us. Your word assures us that if we trust in you, you will keep our minds in perfect peace. You order our steps and go before us, giving us ample reason to rejoice whenever we delve into your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit will deepen my understanding of your word, embedding it in my heart so that my life reflects constant meditation on your truth. In Matthew 21 verse 22, your word says, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Thank you for this promise, that the God of heaven, the creator of all, will answer our prayers. I'm grateful for your caring nature, for your infinite wisdom and power, yet you still take the time to hear and listen to our prayers. For this, I will rejoice. Lord, I thank you for every single thing you do, from granting me health to protecting my family. Holy Spirit, guide me to always live in a manner that glorifies and praises God, a manner that is joyful and thankful. Thank you for your ever-present presence that surrounds me and for hearing this prayer. May you be blessed now and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus spoke about the future. He warned us about the great deception that will come, with many falsely claiming to be the Christ, leading many astray. He spoke of wars, rumours of wars, and how many will fall away, betraying and hating one another. But amidst these challenges, Jesus also spoke of his return, promising to appear with all power and glory. He mentioned a day and an hour known only to the Father, emphasising the uncertainty of the future. Throughout Matthew 24, Jesus laid the groundwork for explaining the parable of the ten virgins, found in Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. The passage tells us that the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five were foolish, taking no oil with them, while the other five were wise, bringing flasks of oil with their lamps. As they waited for the bridegroom, they all became drowsy and slept. Then, at midnight, there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. All the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones, realising their lamps were going out, asked the wise ones for oil. But the wise replied, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This parable paints a vivid picture of two types of people, even among Christians. The wise ones are diligent and attentive to God's ways, while the foolish ones are complacent. The wise heed the warnings in the Bible, while the foolish disregard them. The wise are prayerful, patient and expectant of the Lord's return, while the foolish procrastinate, saying, Tomorrow I'll get right with God, tomorrow I'll pray. But tomorrow is not promised, dear friend. The wise are watchful, recognising the signs of the times because they diligently study God's word. On the other hand, the foolish fall asleep, missing the signs due to their lack of knowledge. Let us join together in prayer. Lord Jesus, you are great, mighty and worthy of all praise. We come before you 
seeking wisdom in these uncertain times. Grant us wisdom and understanding as we delve into your word. Help us grasp the truth it holds so that we can discern the evil prevalent in our world today. Guide us, Lord, so that we may not be lost or blinded to the signs of your return. As Matthew 24 verse 4 warns, see that no one leads you astray. Grant us discernment to identify those who disguise themselves as agents of light, but are truly wolves in sheep's clothing. Help us recognize false apostles and prophets, guarding us against deception. Lord, may our ears not be enticed by watered-down messages that merely serve to make us feel good. Strengthen us to stand firm in your truth, unwavering in the face of compromise. Father, we long for, and we need the true and full gospel of Jesus Christ, a gospel that calls us to repent and forsake our sinful ways, a gospel that urges us to take up our cross and follow you. As Matthew 24, verse 11 to 14 warns, false prophets will arise leading many astray. Lawlessness will increase, causing the love of many to grow cold, but those who endure to the end will be saved. May this gospel of the kingdom be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, signaling the coming of the end. Even as lawlessness increases, I pray that the love of the Lord remains strong in our lives. Let our love as children of God never grow cold. May our hearts remain sensitive and receptive to your voice, Lord Jesus. In a world filled with sin, may we remain pure and upright through the strength of the Holy Spirit. As Psalm 25 verse 20 to 21 implores, Guard my soul and deliver me. May integrity and uprightness preserve me. Help us to be people of integrity in this lawless world, standing up for righteousness. Guard us against contamination by the sin and filth of this world. And should we be tempted, should our flesh fall into temptation, Lord Jesus, be our strength and help us to resist. Your word in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 assures us, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Lord Jesus, I thank you for being a God who always provides a way for us to escape the grip of sin whenever we're tempted. Help us, Lord, so that we never lose sight of the blessed hope of your return. Grant us the strength to be watchful, always ready for your coming. May you always be the desire of our hearts. Thank you for listening to this prayer. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. We all experience seasons where questions outnumber answers. Have you ever reached a point where all you can do is ask God questions? Questions like, Lord, what should I do? How should I handle this? When will my family be restored? When will I be healed? In such moments, instead of searching for all the details or answers, instead of revising plans and panicking, simply invite God into your situation. Invite Him to be the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, and the defense for the case before you. There will be situations where answers are elusive, events that simply don't make sense. We must come to terms with this reality, because it's only when we accept it that we can navigate through life's difficult moments. Let's remember the words of our Lord Jesus in Matthew 11 verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let me clarify something. This verse isn't saying, come to me, and I'll give you every detail of what's going on in your life. It's not promising a clear picture of everything. Rather, Jesus is inviting us to bring our burdens, our worries, and our sleepless nights to him. When we come to him, those problems may still be there, that situation may still be unclear, but he offers us peace and rest. In verse 29, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Twice in these verses, Jesus mentions finding rest in him, and by rest, he's telling us to relax, to refrain from worrying, and to stop trying to fix everything ourselves. It's about giving it all to the Lord. So consider this. Could it be that God is allowing you to face this trial so that you can deepen your trust in Him? Could it be that He's teaching you to let go and stop trying to control every aspect of your life? Just think about it. Could it be that God is allowing you to face this test to humble you? Perhaps you've been too self-reliant. Always invite God into your situation because you cannot do it alone. You certainly don't have all the answers you need, but when you take it to Jesus, 
you can surely have peace and rest. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you for being our able helper and our load bearer. We trust in you, King Jesus, and we trust in your blood, which has miraculous and wonder-working power. Father, let there be a great move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May we experience restoration, freedom, and victory in your name. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything I'm connected with, and as I pray, Lord, I ask that you would meet the needs of every individual listening right now, every family tuning in. We believe that nothing is impossible with you, Master. Your blood can cleanse us from all sin, make us whole again, and restore health to our bodies. Your blood, Lord Jesus, can restore our troubled minds, heal our hearts, and set us free from every stronghold. It can heal and restore love, joy, and peace in broken homes, reuniting families and restoring marriages. Your blood protects us and delivers us from the snare of the fowler. Lord Jesus, we look to you to be our shield and our protection. Protect us from the terror of the night and defend us from the arrows that fly by day. Guard us from the pestilence that stalks in darkness. You are our dwelling place, and when we call, you answer. When we're in trouble, you rescue and deliver us. Indeed, your word says, A thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. We praise you for this promise, Lord. We thank you. Lord Jesus, we invite your presence into our lives. We welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives. And at this time, I pray for each and every one under the sound of my voice. I declare your word that tells us, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. I pray and declare Psalm 121 verse 7, which says, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Father, I pray and declare Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. We call on you, Jesus. We run to you finding refuge and protection in your presence. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our homes, our families, our health and the works of our hands. Should the enemy come to steal from us, may he find the angel of the Lord standing guard around us. Should the enemy come to destroy us, I pray that he will be blinded and that there will be confusion in his camp. God, we praise you for this blessed assurance. We look to you and place our hope in you. Lord, it's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray this prayer and we give you thanks. Amen. One thing you need to make a practice of is praying. Make it a habit to pray in the morning. Make it a habit to pray every evening. Make it a habit and routine to pray often and daily. We sometimes take life for granted and we take God's protection for granted. But let me tell you, you are most vulnerable when you're comfortable. The devil loves a comfortable Christian, and God calls a comfortable Christian lukewarm. That's because you're neither hot nor cold, you're neither here nor there. There's no urgency about you, and there's certainly no fire to your prayers. However, I want to emphasise the importance of prayer. We need the Lord to watch over us and protect us. As the Bible says in Mark 14 verse 38, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When you are comfortable and prayerless, you are in your weakest state as a believer. And let me tell you something. When you are prayerless, you are vulnerable to spiritual attacks. The forces of darkness operate in darkness, both spiritually and physically. The devil is cunning, and he certainly doesn't play fair. He will wait until you've let your guard down and you are dull in your spiritual senses because of a lack of prayer. That's when he will attack. Today, I want to encourage and remind you of the protection we have in Jesus Christ. No matter what the devil may try, we are guarded and shielded by Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus has formed a perimeter around our homes and the angel of the Lord encamps with us when we call on the name of the Father. So, do not fear whatever comes your way because Jesus Christ is a mighty protector and saviour. He will cover you and block the enemy. Each day, I encourage you to pray for the divine protection that comes only from the Son of God. It's the kind of protection that rebukes the enemy and exposes his plans, giving no power to spiritual attacks. David, a man after God's own heart, said in Psalm 119 verse 62, At midnight, 
I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. I encourage you to rise up at any time of day. Rise up and praise the Lord. Thank him for all he has done, for all he is doing, and for all he will continue to do. Let us pray. My dear Lord Jesus, you deserve all the glory, honor, and praise for your faithfulness. I invite you into my heart and into my home. May your presence be found in this place, and may the Holy Spirit's presence be strong here. I pray that you would watch over me always, wrapping me in your loving arms and keeping me safe. Defend me from every attack of the enemy, Lord Jesus. Protect me from all trouble and unrest, guarding me from the evil in this world and preserving me from the attacks of the devil. I will forever sing praises to your holy name, lifting the name of Jesus Christ high above all my cares and problems, higher than every principality and power of darkness. Your word in Psalm 57 verse 1 states, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Indeed, I will be sheltered all the days of my life when I am hidden in your presence. Today I cry out to you alone, Lord Jesus, the one who performs miraculous works for me. You are my hope and rescue. I will be at peace, knowing that you have said in your word that I should not be afraid, for I have you with me. I should not be discouraged, because you, Jehovah, are my God, the creator of all ages who will strengthen me, the only one with resurrection power who will help me. I speak with the authority that's in the name of Jesus, and I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No plan or scheme from the enemy will prosper in Jesus' name. Instead, Lord, I pray that you give me a sound mind. I come before you, Lord, with a heart and mind that is focused on you. Keep me in your arms, Lord Jesus. Your love and protection are more real than what my natural eyes can see. I place all of my trust and confidence in you, Lord. In every situation I face, every battle I face, I will put my trust in you. Give me ears to hear you, Master. Give me ears that are sensitive to your instruction and guidance. Give me eyes that will see your goodness always. I pray for a heart that will always remain faithful to you, Jesus. You are the solid foundation that my life has been built on. You are the son of the living God who died on the cross for my sins and your blood was shed for me so that I may never be defeated. I have total faith and confidence in you because even death was powerless to hold you. When you watch over me, I know that the enemy will be powerless over my life. You are my risen Savior, who has the power to resurrect my spirit and my faith. Today, Lord, I receive your resurrection power and declare that there is no dead thing in my life. There is no evil that can come near me, because the blood of the Lamb of God protects me. I declare that there are no cracks in my foundation, because Christ is the solid rock I stand on. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Romans 8 verse 31 asks, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let me tell you, God is on your side, the Lord is on your side. Your feelings might say otherwise. Your current situation might seem daunting. But the Bible, oh, the Bible has assured us time and time again that God is faithful. He is true, he is a protector, and he is the sure rescue of all those who trust in him. We all need to cling to the promise found in Isaiah 41 verse 10, which says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right use right hand. These words can instill a faith in your life that displaces all fear. They can ignite a confidence in you, for there will be times when we're challenged and tested, times when we're threatened or intimidated. In those moments, we must remember the word of the Lord, a word that tells us not to be afraid or discouraged. It's a word that promises to strengthen us when we're weak, and it's crucial because the enemy knows our vulnerabilities. He knows when we're frustrated, when we're depressed, when we're down. He knows exactly when to strike. In ancient times, during battles with swords and shields, one side would often wait until night fell to launch an ambush. They'd wait until the other side was weakened or asleep. Similarly, the enemy waits for our moments of frustration and discouragement to attack. He's cunning, but we have a powerful ally in Jesus Christ. No matter what state you're in, if you turn to Jesus for strength, you can rebook the devil. Luke 10 verse 19 Asurisus, Behold, 
I have given you authority to triad on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. We've been given power and authority by Jesus Christ himself. This means the devil can only succeed against us if we choose to ignore the authority we have in Christ, if we allow him to. So I want to urge you, saints of God, this is not the time to stay silent. Instead, be bold, be loud, as you declare God's word over your situation. Start proclaiming, if God is for me, who can be against me? Remember, the Lord is on your side. Whether you feel strong or weak in your spirit, just remember that God is on your side. As believers, we always need to rely on His might and His strength. Now, with this in mind, let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We're grateful for the battles you fight for us, both seen and unseen. Father, each and every person listening right now needs your divine protection. You know our struggles, Lord, you know our private battles, and you understand what each of us is facing. So, we call for your help. We cannot do this alone. We cannot fight these battles alone. We can't go through this life without you. And Lord, as I pray for the person listening, whatever it is that they're wrestling with, be it in their spirit, their minds, or their bodies, whatever area of their life that's facing opposition, I call on the name that is above every name. I call on you, King Jesus, to set us free, because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Set us free in our minds, Lord. Set us free in our bodies. Release us from the clutches of the enemy. Set us free from unrest in our hearts. Break the strongholds that your people face. Break the chains that are pulling your children down. Lord, we declare no more fear, no more anxiety, no more unrest in our hearts. You have the final say, Lord Jesus. And your word says that you have come to give us life and life more abundantly. According to your word, we declare that no weapon formed against us or our families will prosper. In the name of Jesus, no assault from the enemy will prosper. And Lord, even while the enemy roams back and forth looking for whom he may devour, we stand by the power that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. We stand by the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I surrender the throne of my heart to you and I bless your holy name. You stand above all, above any principalities, above any ruler of wickedness. There is none and there is nothing that can stand against you and so we will forever call upon your name. I believe that you will give each of us a breakthrough, even though our eyes may not be able to see it now. We believe by faith, and we believe that you are working on our behalf, working for our good. Lord Jesus, I pray for wisdom and discernment in this season. Your word says in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. And so we seek your face, Lord Jesus. We come to you, Father, bowing down before your throne, asking for your help. We're asking for a supernatural breakthrough. Move in us, Holy Spirit. Be our comfort at this time. And Lord, I ask that you forgive me. Forgive me if I have taken your grace or your goodness for granted. Your word has given me the promise that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Lord, help me to walk by faith and not by sight. Your word in Exodus 14 verse 14 says, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Lord, I pray that you fight my battles. Keep me from falling for the tricks of the enemy. Be a lamp unto my feet so that I may be saved from the path that is filled with evil. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and reverence. You are the Almighty God, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the Alpha and the Omega. I thank you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon me, for the gift of life, for your unfailing love and for your constant presence in my life. Lord, I acknowledge my weaknesses and shortcomings before you. I confess any sins that I have committed, knowing that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please forgive me for the times I have fallen short of your glory and help me to walk in your ways, seeking righteousness and holiness in all that I do. I lift up to you my family, my friends, and all those who are dear to me. I pray for their health, safety, and well-being. Protect them from harm and danger, and surround them with your love and grace. Strengthen the bonds of love and unity among us, and may we always support and encourage one another in faith. Lord, I intercede for those who are suffering and in need. Comfort the brokenhearted, heal the sick, and provide for the needy. Bring peace to the troubled hearts and minds of those who are facing challenges and difficulties. 
Lord, I glorify your precious name. Be honored, be magnified. God, I thank you for hearing my prayer, and I bless your holy name. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, and I give you thanks. Amen. Please feel free to type Amen in the comment section if this message resonates with your spirit and you'd like to join in prayer. Your participation extends the reach of this message, touching more lives and spreading the message of faith and hope. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. The journey continues, and the Holy Spirit remains our constant companion, our ever-present guide. In Him we find the wisdom, strength, and love we need for each day.